This pond is actually a battery. Water mills have a lot of advantages. The single biggest one is actually the pond behind me. This pond is called a mill pond. It's a reserved amount of water which you can turn on and turn off. That's the advantage of a mill like this. You can control this gate here at the top of the mill wheel and control when the water is going through the sluice and when it's going to go and actually turn the wheel. That means that you have energy on tap whenever you need it to drive the stuff. You can turn it on, turn it off, have regular hours and go, unless there's a drought. The Netherlands is actually really unusual for its reliance on windmills. Windmills make sense in one of two conditions. One, you don't have water. This is common in the Middle East. There's a lot of windmills down there. The second case is if you don't have access to differences in height. Holland is unusual in that it is so flat that even finding a differential in height of 10 feet like this to make a mill run is really rare. There also aren't a lot of fast moving rivers, which means running uh, static mills in a river is similarly very difficult. That reliability factor, the ability to turn the power on and off, which you cannot do with wind power, is still a problem today with renewable energy. You have this massive problem in that you can work if the wind is blowing, you can't work if it's not. With a water wheel in comparison or a hydroelectric dam, you have the ability to turn it on and turn it off when you want it because the water is stored up. It's exactly like having a massive liquid battery. And anytime you allow it to flow through by opening a particular sluice gate, you have power. One interesting thing I just learned by talking with the mill operator is that these sorts of water mills typically have much less power than a comparable windmill. The massive blades of the windmill can capture insane amounts of power. But what you gain in power, again, you lose in consistency. In this particular paper mill, they have the advantage of being able to operate constantly, day and night, 24 hours in a day, super consistently. And they're able to control exactly how much the maximum power is. One of the challenges in a comparable windmill is that you can't work if the wind isn't blowing but you also can't work if it's blowing too fast. Now, with these windmills, it's possible to reef the sails to a halfway position and kind of slow it down if it's going too crazy. But if it ever gets above a certain point and it's going too fast, it's getting close to storming, again, you can't work. So you have to operate in kind of this middle space and the engineering of the mill is designed to take advantage of the smallest wind possible and to create the largest window of usable wind that they can. And there's, the reason, a, there's another reason why you wouldn't want a water mill in uh, the Netherlands, which is that water mills move the water down. Yes. Which is exactly the opposite of what you're trying to do. <laughs> True. We have windmills to raise the water up. I guess what you could have... It's a perpetual motion machine! Yeah! Supposedly, we will eventually crack this by being able to take wind power and storing up its energy, similar to the idea I just mentioned of, of raising the water up and then lowering it down again, by storing it up in batteries or flywheels or some other form of storage device. That way you can kind of even out this crazy curve where you have power sometimes and too much sometimes, and then the wind is dead other times. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe below and hit the like button. Thank you. This is yet another use for wattle. Here it's being used as a filter for a mill pond to keep gunk from going downstream. It's catching all the leaves and twigs and other things that might go down into your, into your water wheel and stopping them. So in this case, the fact that it's porous is actually really helpful.